there's an easy calm at Techiman in the Bono East region as families of NDC supporters gunned down by security personnel during the election. Collation exercise demand justice. Residents of both political divides say fallouts of the just ended elections and subsequent shooting have destroyed the peace that existed between them for years. The shooting at the Techiman Collation Center claimed two lives and injured nine people. Love FM's Erastus Asari Donko spent some days in Techiman, gauging the mood the days after the shooting and came through with this report. <laughs> Some police and military personnel fired into a crowd of NDC supporters at the collation of the Techiman South election results. Acting Bono East Regional Police Commander DCOP Asumedu Ochredako confirms casualty from that incident. So far, we officially we have two people dead and nine people injured. One of the dead is 18-year-old Abdullah Ayarik, an apprentice in the street lighting business in Techiman. One journalist who rushed him to a waiting ambulance describes the moment. I saw one guy lying down here. So I came to him. Blood was oozing from the nose and the eyes. At that time, he was breathing very slowly. So I lift him on my chest. By that time, when he breathed, at the same time, you, you, you could see blood ooze from the nose and the eyes. So I took him to the ambulance. And uh, by the time I got to All this time, their guns were always pointed to the side of the NDC. But nobody ever thought the guns could go off in our direction because our hands were clean. The family says it is only justice that can reduce the pain. They shot my boy from the back of the neck. They shot him from the back of the neck. The family wants justice to prevail, to serve as presidents. All who matter in this country should intervene and bring those culpable to face the law. Bullets from this officer seen in the video firing directly at the crowd could have been responsible for the death of another victim. Mohammed Tajuddin, 41, is a truck driver and a father of four, three girls and a boy. The eldest is 15 years. He is described as a calm, loving father with a deep sense of humor. 
We met his father, Sadiq Al Hassan, and mother, Hawa Musa, at their family house in Techiman. His hands and feet were very cold when I held him, and I realized then he was dead. When he visits me and I don't have water, despite being married, he would fetch water for me. Sometimes he requests to wash my clothes. In the video of the shooting, Emma Hawa Musa is seen helping carry emotionless Mohammed at the collation center. His mouth was full of blood. When he breathes heavily, blood was oozing from his mouth, ears, nose, everywhere. I shouted, they've killed my son. They've killed my son. Strangely, the mother of victim, Tajidin, is not seeking justice. She says she leaves the shooters to God's justice. I give everything to God. We don't need anything. I've lost everything. Even if I'm giving billions, my son will not come back. So for us, we are bringing our case before God. Both Yusuf, father of Ayarik, and Emma Musa have reservations about events that occurred at the collation center in Techiman South constituency. It was all fun that day, with NPP supporters chanting songs across the NDC side. There was no fight. So if anybody says we were fighting, it's a lie. Nine people sustained various degrees of injuries from the shooting. We were able to locate two of them who were still on admission at the Wenchi Methodist Hospital at the time of our visit. Elias Suleimana was shot in the arm. He has undergone surgeries to replace broken bones. He currently sports an arm on a plaster of Paris with surgical metals sticking out of it in four different spots. His brother, Hamidou Suleimana, speaks about okay. his condition. He had a broken bone inside, but thanks be to God and the doctors, uh, they made a surgery the following day. So as I'm talking now, he's still alive and he's still kicking good. Abu Bakar Idrisu also suffered gunshot wounds to the leg and can only walk with the aid of clutches. Dr. Abraham Oman is the medical coordinator for the Wenchi Methodist Hospital. One had radio ulna fracture, that is fracture of the arm. Uh, and then the other one had a gunshot injury that went through the, the leg. Currently, they've all received treatment. They've all undergone surgery. The December 8th violent collation of Techiman South election results and the shooting have left a sharp division between supporters of the NPP and NDC, who, he thought, lived in peace. Though the larger part of Techiman remains peaceful and calm, beneath it grows a simmering lack of faith and trust which threatens the latter. Anger will be um, because when you see an MPP sympathizer, you feel like attacking. It's like they are having some bad blood between them against them. But the shooting is not MPP who shoot, it's the security. And they were preventing the uh, destruction of state properties. We all feel sad what happened. The youth have divergent opinions on results of the elections, especially election. the parliamentary elections. Open one of the peace uh, constituencies. The Chiman South is one of the peaceful constituencies. This time around is because it's the first time a Nodna has contested and won. And because of that, he's been denied the seat. The loss of loved ones and what they describe as a stolen election creates a double agony 
whose uncanny urge for action is being restrained. We never lost any life in any election here. It has started with this election, but the leaders should break this trend. Or else, it will follow through subsequent elections. Supporters of the NDC in Techman South believe their candidate Christopher Bayre has been robbed of victory and they anticipate a recollation. But the hierarchy of the NPP and NDC differ strongly on the subject. At a recent collation of the Sine West parliamentary results, Dan Bote of the NPP and Dr. Kwabna Donko of the NDC shared their views. Once results are declared, they should know how to challenge it. So you cannot say that you want the Chiman South to go to what process? It's time they are finished with letter commission has declared. So it's typical NDC. Either uh, it's mischief or they will not take time to study or learn the process very well. We of the NDC, what we are saying is that Techiman South, like Banda in the Bono region, EC had declared Banda in the favor of NDC. Yes, MPP insisted that there should be recollation, and it was done. So what stops the same EC using the same principle to do a recollation for Techiman South? That is all we're saying. Affected families in the shooting who remain bitter say the issue will remain a certain time bomb until justice reigns. Reporting for Joy News, Erastus Asaridonko, Techiman South, Bono East Region. Erastus Asaridonko, our colleague there, uh, putting that extensive report and helping us appreciate. So we've seen the videos, we've heard the different stories, but now we're seeing the families and the people that have been lost in this incident. Erastus yeah. joins us with a lot more of what he gathered that couldn't make it into this report via Zoom Gifty. Right, so this story essentially tells you the full story, the beginning and where it ended, being that some people have been injured and one, uh, two people are dead, as we speak. Um, Erastus is joining us via Zoom. Hello, Erastus. Hello, Gifty. Erastus, good morning and great job uh, there. Certainly great job and the way that you slowed the video so people can see exactly what is happening in that particular part. Let me start by, we started airing this yesterday. Mm. I, I want to just start quickly by uh, asking if there has been any feedback so far. <laughs> Well, um, I tried to find out um, the condition of the two who were on admission. I'm told that the other one who could walk with the clutches has been discharged and he's going through physiotherapy. Um, the other one, however, is still on admission, uh, receiving uh, treatment. I'm also told that the police intend to uh, do an inquiry as to when that inquiry will start, um, I'm yet to be briefed on that one, but uh, police in Techiman are still waiting uh, that that inquiry will be set up and they will appear before it. Let's take a look at the uh, evidence available. I mean, from, from uh, the perspective of the people involved in this and yours, what, do, or what, do the, what does the evidence available at the moment point to? In fact, when uh, we went to the ground and upon listening to people and then gathering um, all manner of evidence, video evidence and other things, uh, people voluntarily came up with videos from different angles, uh, shot from different angles on the same incident. And clearly, uh, you could see uh, that there were attempts by some of the security agents uh, to gun people down. Uh, whilst others were shooting in the air, you could see some of them uh, pointing their guns directly at certain people, even to the extent that when you slow the video down uh, more, you could see some of them point to certain people within the crowd before shooting. And so um, it raises questions about what was the motive in firing directly at the crowd? Um, why will anybody want to uh, kill people in such a manner? Um, uh, those are questions that uh, perhaps if an inquiry is set up, it will go into a deep probe mm. uh, to establish 
uh, the mens rea or uh, the motive behind uh, that action by the security agencies. Mm. You've been speaking to the Techiman police commander. I suppose that he must have answered a few questions on what other available um, approaches there were for them at the time when they tried to disperse the crowd. Because in the video, we see this, you know, um, errant crowd that's coming on towards them. Did they, they talk about which other approaches they could have used and whether they used those approaches and it didn't work before they started shooting uh, into the air? In fact, Gifty, it will surprise you to know that the police did not want to touch on the shooting at all. Okay. They didn't want to say anything at all about the shooting. And the indication I got on the ground was that they did not want to contradict themselves. Uh, they be, they've been given strict, um, uh, you know, uh, information from up there from the headquarters that it is possible that an inquiry will be set up Mm. They do not want to talk to the media before that inquiry uh, is set up and contradict themselves. So they should stay away from commenting directly on the shooting. And so if you realize that um, the bit of the police in the report is only um, about what they are doing after the shooting and then uh, the casualties involved in, in the shooting itself. Um, we try to nose around to speak with certain people within the police service. But um, what we were told uh, was that what happened was not good. Um, they wouldn't want to comment about it. But then when an inquiry is set up, they will certainly present uh, their side of the story. Mm. There, there, there has also been a beefing up of security there, Rastos. I want to bring uh, Mamavi in. Uh, at this point, so we can, you know, mm. carry on the conversation from there. Yeah, but Rasas, you can talk about the security situation, but also talk us through the kind of conversations that ordinary people are having on the ground. Is there still anger? Mamavi, there is still so much anger on the ground. And it divided uh, people, I would, I, I would say. In fact, when you go to areas like Wangara Line, uh, Mampusi Line, um, areas inhabited um, mostly by NDC supporters, uh, they will tell you that there has never been such sharp divisions between them, the MPP and the NDC. They used to be families. There were no fights. But then uh, this incident has sharply divided them. Uh, hardly will NPP supporters now go into such areas and when they go into such areas, you could sense uh, that, uh, you know, any argument whatsoever will spark uh, that kind of uh, uh, violence. When you, you, you listen to the father of uh, Ayarik, Abdullah Ayarik, one of the deceased, and it, it tells you that they are really restraining themselves a lot. Um, there is so much pain on the ground, especially he talks about the fact that after a day after his son was shot dead, uh, the security agents came to his house and started firing sporadically uh, just to scare people away from uh, people who have come there to sympathize with them. And so all this uh, is bottled up inside them. And they think that it's only justice, uh, an inquiry to bring the perpetrators to book that will quell any sort of pain that is within them. So there is... Uh, uh, let me say, uh, an uneasy calm uh, mm. within the area. Yeah, but Erasmus, did the family also confirm uh, if they had been contacted by the police as they investigate this matter? Because that's what the election task force said to the whole nation. Well, I, I spoke with the father uh, recently, and I was told that uh, no such thing has been done. Uh, they've not been contacted by anybody. Uh, aside, uh, the next day when the police came there to fire guns, and then you could also see armored uh, vehicles uh, with military men in there, um, police patrol vehicles on a daily basis patrolling the streets. Um, that is what you see on a daily basis. But so, aside so this that, is the presence. Uh, this is a present situation you're describing with the security, situ the, with what's happening in terms of security. Yes. Okay.
Erastas, I remember the doctor at the hospital saying, no, no, I think uh, the police commander did say that nine persons were injured, but you met two in the hospital and you say one has been discharged. So where are the seven? Well, the seven, I'm told that they were all discharged, um, I think, uh, some two days after the incident. Uh, they were all admitted at the Holy Family uh, Hospital in Techiman. Uh, some of the injuries were uh, minor, and so they were discharged yesterday. Uh, some others also decided to seek uh, herbal treatment and other things for uh, their injuries. And so these two were the most critical, uh, mm -hmm. that surgeries will have, had to be conducted on them. And so if you look at... Um, the other one who is still on admission, uh, there was a hole in the arm itself. The bones were broken to bits, I'm oh. told. And so uh, doctors had to do a series of surgeries uh, to try to uh, put in artificial uh, metals to support the bone in there. So that gentleman will have to be on admission until the surgeon says it's okay, it's safe uh, mm -hmm. to go home. Then it's possible he will start physiotherapy uh, what will try to uh, uh, correct movement of that particular limb. Yeah. And Arasa, do we know who is taking care of the medical bills? Well, whilst we were there, uh, we had um, the flag bearer of the NDC, um, uh, Mr. John Dramani Mahama, come over um, and he asked for the bill of, of uh, the people on admission uh, to pay them. Uh, we, we saw that he made some cash donations over there. Uh, so that's what we know, that he is the one who foots, uh, footed the bill of the injured. Mm. Yeah, I guess that uh, Erastus uh, will we'll, we'll end it here for now. Mm. I'm sure that as the day goes forward, we'll be getting more of the feedback uh, especially now that we've heard the story and we're also hoping to hear from the NDC whether or not they're going to court today um, or if they'll make that tomorrow. Erastus, if there's anything else that you can add uh, to help our viewers, certainly we'll go for it. Otherwise, that'll be all for now. I think that, that'll be all for now. Uh, we're still in touch uh, with the police and so mm. certainly uh, any development, uh, we'll be right there to bring it to our viewers. Yeah, thank but, you. Arasas, thank you, though. Thank you for, for doing this. Uh, because until this report, we were just talking. People couldn't uh, put faces to the lives that have been lost. So this is a, this is a good deal. This helps our viewers to appreciate the matter. Uh, so we thank you uh, for what you do on the ground, the entire team. Arasas Asari Donko is our colleague with Lava Firm in Kumasi, telling the story of the two persons who have sa sadly died uh, just because of election 2020, really, hmm. and nine persons who have been injured. Two he met in the hospital, and you are familiar with the condition now that we've shared the story. And it shouldn't hmm. be. Mm -mm. Look, the chances are that this gentleman with all these metals stuck in his arm, chances are he won't be able to use that arm anymore. And if he is, say, uh, a, a, a mason, for example, if he, he, whatever you do with your hand, you can't do that anymore. And if that's what brings you food, and that's it. Whoever your dependent are, now you're going to be a dependent. Um, the person with the bullet uh, wound to the leg, to, to, chances are he may not have use of his leg. I'm not saying that's it. I'm not a doctor. But those are the chances. And I don't know. I really don't know that in the 21st century, in the country that has been, um, uh, the name that has been upheld as a beacon of democracy, and uh, we've said it and it's almost become a cliche. Mm -hmm. Now we're still in the 21st century dealing with this yeah. situation. I wish them speedy recovery. And as Erastus has said, the police headquarters has indicated that there will be an inquiry into it. It will be very instructive to understand exactly what happened. What other options were there? Tear gas, um, I don't even like rubber bullets anyway, but tear gas, anything else, uh, water cannons, that could have dispersed the people rather than uh, um, uh, the gun shot, or is it that that was the only option available at that time? And even if there was the only option, you know, you clearly see mm. in the video that yeah. there were some shots going directly into the into the crowd. You know, I've uh, sat I, through. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've sat through uh, a few uh, um, a few training, police and military training, and I they they give them good stuff. 
they really do give them good stuff, especially in the run up to the election. Good training, good, you know. Um, we got a lot of assurances yeah. from the election security uh, uh, task uh, and I'm force. That it's not, this was even beyond assurances. Mm. You now, if you sat in the meeting, you hear the the things they say about the level of professionalism and you expect that the friend of people go out there they'll execute it, it just really breaks my heart two things that i'm looking forward to and i appreciate the igp giving us a briefing uh after this incident had happened i think we need consistent briefing because we have to appreciate where we are if you talk to the police on the ground in terms of those in mm. they are limited I mean, they wouldn't go beyond yeah. what they've been asked to say or not say. But we're still asking a lot of questions. So if there's an inquiry, when is it going to start? Uh, have they started talking to the people? Clearly, we don't get that sense now. Where are we with the investigation? Because what we need now is to get justice. People shot, people died, people are injured, and we need to get to the bottom of it. So we're calling on the, the, security, the election security task force to give us an update on the situation, even as we ask a lot of questions, and even as Joy News has put this uh, report together so that you can put faces to the lives that have been lost and the families behind these lives and what has happened. So we need more update in terms of what the police is doing, not just the talk, but we need to see some action because something has happened, something deadly has happened, and we, ne we need to get to the bottom of it. And then also, I, I think that there should be conversations on the ground. There shouldn't just be uh, security that's been increased in Techiman South, for instance, or Techiman as a whole, but there should be some conversations with the local people. It shouldn't just be heightened security and tightened security there. We've got some comments coming through yeah. uh, on WhatsApp on this matter and other things. Well, on WhatsApp, we have comments about people's 2020 and the mm. reflection so we're going to go on facebook uh, where we posted the story some of you have been commenting on it as well so there it is uh mm. facebook i'll start with uh, moses champon he says it is sad his family deserves better we all cost it the party leaders must be held responsible their children are happily enjoying i hope and pray that the supreme court will bar the party supporters from going to the coalition centers henceforth it's my prayer also that the Supreme Court will bar all the political parties from telling the party supporters to go to the coalition centers henceforth. Now, that's a question that I sincerely forgot. I wanted to ask Erastos because we heard that some there had been prior announcements on a certain radio in that area asking the people to, you know, mass up at the coalition center. I wanted to find out from Erastos whether the people on the ground have corroborated that particular story, but we'll get that done uh, subsequently. Let's finish with the messages, some of the responses we're getting from you. This is a very long one, so mm -hmm. let me skip that part. Victoria Adobia Guerrero says, very sad, too bad. Why should we bring our children to this place? They are not there. They, they are not there vote, to vote either. I don't understand. We should protect our children because no one will protect them for us. We should educate them because uh, in times like this, and how unsafe we should educate them about how unsafe it is for them there are so many wicked people out there well uh, actually these are not kids uh, that but gifty i want i want us to too. also make something clear mm. it is not against the law to after you're done voting because we had that even in the communication that said go and vote after that go home you yeah. can go back when the counting begins mm -hmm. so ordinary p persons are allowed to monitor yeah. how the counting goes yeah. so that's not against any regulation or any law mm. uh, except that a lot of people stay away from it but there are people who are interested even though they're not party agents who just go and gather just to observe but i think except that i serve on joy news you can observe on, yeah, you can observe on TV, you can observe on radio. Yeah. You don't necessarily need to put your person in that place. I mean, years gone by when we didn't have TV, when we didn't have the sophistication. I mean, people, someone will be there and they'll be streaming on their, on their uh, Facebook. Mm. So you don't necessarily have to put yourself there, knowing very well that anything can happen. It's a crowd. You know, I, so I, I kind of appreciate that, but I don't want to... I don't want it, even though we saw that this crowd that had gathered unusually um, heavy, because I'm not sure, I'm not sure I've seen that many, but I mean, yeah. I, I haven't been to any coalition as, you know, when they are putting together the figures. 
But I don't want it to sound like because many people went to went the there. coalition center. That's why this happened. That's why this happened. Okay. You, you, you get, I, I get you what get you a, mean. Uh -huh. I get what you so. mean. But what we've also heard is that, you know, the, you have a number of people coming towards the secret. So they were there to observe the coalition. And then something happened. And apparently there, there were some, you know, calls for people to mass up. So the people started massing up and the security personnel are there and trying to, you know, ward off the crowd. That's, that's the story that um, we, we've heard. And again, I, like I said, I wanted Erasmus to corroborate that. Did someone go on radio? to incite the people to mass up mm. at the collation center mm. when they uh, be, uh, saying things that incited them even before they got there saying things that someone wants to steal or mm. someone wants to rig the election so at the time they get there they already have that perception someone is stealing we won't allow it and that's what brings up the agitation you know you said something something may have triggered something exactly and i guess that's why if, you know if there's an inquiry that's why we're happy that they say they're investigating, but we want to know, you know, where we, are we? we exactly? Are we? Because what? what is that something? What is that something like? What happened? What happened? If many people gathered and they were peacefully, because we are told that one side belonged to one party, MPP, the other yeah, side the belonged other side to one. MPC. And if they were all observing the, the coalition, what is that thing that happened that triggered either the throwing of stones or attacks, if there were attacks, uh, that also required that the security personnel would also try to protect themselves. Mm. Okay, mm. so what is that one thing? I guess yeah. that's what we're looking for. What is right. that one thing? Right. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay, so we will take a breather from this, but it's still very much a developing story. But it trust is. us, when we have more to share, we will bring it to you. So keep asking the very relevant questions. We will put it to authorities when we get them. But when we come back, you will be joining us via Zoom as we have our conversation on reflections of 2020. Uh, and then we'll have one more conversation that we'll be playing back to you, so stay with us.